Uh, I have no disclosures. Uh, and I'm going to try to hit five topics, epidemiology, prevention, screening, primary disease, and metastatic disease. And that's a lot to do in a short period of time. Uh, Dave's already told you that uh, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death. Uh, and if you look just at women, uh, breast cancer is by far the most common cancer, uh, but second behind uh, lung in the cause of uh, deaths, cancer deaths in women. The risk factors you can divide into endogenous and exogenous. Uh, obviously, being a woman is a major risk factor, though we do see breast cancer rarely in men. Uh, age is a risk factor. It's more common in women who are over 60 or 65. Family history, susceptibility genes, we'll talk about. And uh, endogenous estrogen ex exposure, early menarche, um, and uh, high estrogen exposure through life. Uh, exogenously, hormone uh, replacement therapy, we'll talk about a little bit. I'm not going to talk about diet um, or obesity or alcohol during the talk. Uh, this is uh, the Women's Health Initiative uh, randomized trial of uh, hormone replacement therapy uh, that was published a number of years ago where a large number of postmenopausal women were randomized to combine estrogen, progesterone, and hormone replacement therapy, or placebo. And what we saw in um, this group was that there was a rapid increase in breast cancer risk after just three years of exposure to combined hormone therapy uh, that continued to grow with time. Uh, what this resulted in was a rapid decrease in the prescription of hormone replacement therapy in this country, and this is the number of prescriptions for HRT between 2000 and 2004, and you can see that that fell dramatically in the face of these data. And what we saw as a result of that was the fall in breast cancer risk only in postmenopausal women. Uh, the breast cancer risk in premenopausal women stayed even, but there was a downtrend in that in postmenopausal women. And in fact, if you looked at the type of breast cancer that uh, decreased, it was all estrogen receptor positive breast cancers, presumably stimulated by the hormone replacement therapy. So this is a nice example of cause and then taking the cause away and seeing resolution of the findings. There is, though, um, another hormone replacement therapy, which is pure estrogens, or CEE, without progesterone. This is stimulative to the uterus, so only women who had had hysterectomies were eligible for this trial. And uh, this was a trial that was stopped after seven, seven years uh, because of questionable benefit and risk of increased stroke. And what we saw here was exactly the opposite of what we expected to see, which was that those women who were on uh, conjugated estrogens actually had a lower risk of breast cancer than uh, those uh, who uh, were on placebo. Uh, I'm not sure how to explain this. All the other data suggests that uh, long-term estrogen exposure, in fact, increases your risk for breast cancer. So this is a little bit of a puzzle to us. None of us would suggest that you use this treatment as a prevention for breast cancer. We'll talk about other strategies in just a minute. So what about family history? Um, family history is a very heterogeneous risk factor, and there are models like the Gale model, uh, which is available online, and you can plug in a family history, and it will give you what the risk of an individual developing breast cancer is. Um, a couple of important points. Uh, family history is really most significant when it's first degree relatives, that's mothers, sisters, and daughters. It's also more significant if your relative developed breast cancer at an early age. So if your mother developed breast cancer when she was 30, that's a much greater risk factor than your mother developing breast cancer when she's 70. In addition, uh, family members who develop bilateral breast cancer raise your risk of developing breast cancer, and then more women in the family who have breast cancer will also raise your risk. Now, what about the two breast cancer um, predisposition genes, BRCA1 and 2? 
Um, what we know is that they're both associated mutations in these genes, germline genes are associated with an increased risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer, and in the case of BRCA2, for male breast cancer as well. Uh, we are certain that there are other germline mutations that uh, convey increased risk for breast cancer, and we're just starting to sort out what some of those might be. Uh, and one of the questions is, who should be screened uh, for this? Well, obviously, women who come from a family where other family members are known to have uh, mutations in these genes should be screened. And then very strong family histories, again, as outlined in one of the previous slides, uh, might cause you to want to screen someone. But there are a few things that you should remember. Um, at the Dana-Farber, 95% of the patients we see do not have a germline mutation for one of these two genes. Uh, so that this is not the common cause of breast cancer. It's actually an unusual cause of breast cancer. Um, in fact, 85% of our patients don't have a family history of any significance for breast cancer either. And um, I see patients, you know, every week, new patients who come in and say, I have no family history. You know, they find out they don't have a gene mutation. They want to know why it happened to them. And the answer is it's a very common disease, and we don't understand what many of the risk factors are.